Coming up in today's video, I'll take you through part two of my Team Yankee painting guide. This guide will focus on how I paint French camouflage on the awesome Leclerc model from Battlefront. The tutorial focuses on making the process super easy without all the extra fuss. I'm sure you'll agree that the end outcome is pretty awesome. A huge thank you also goes out to Ryan and the rest of the amazing team at Battlefront for sending me these sprues. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video as I'll be running another small giveaway. Right, we are on to part two of my Battlefront Team Yankee painting guide. So this is the Leclerc. I hope I'm saying that right for anyone that's French and wants to correct me, please do so. I failed French in the UK miserably, so I hope I've got that right. But this is the Leclerc. Uh, it's sent to me by Battlefront. It's an awesome kit. And today we're going to have a quick look at it and also how I went about painting it. So if you want to acquire this set or this particular tank, you can go onto the Team Yankee website, go onto the online store. If you navigate to France, then you'll be able to get all the items for the French. So I'm going to go against what the English normally do and say that I actually think this French tank is awesome. It's probably one of the best looking modern tanks, in my opinion. Um, it probably beats the British Challenger, but I know that might get the go of some of my English supporters and being English myself but uh, all jokes aside it's a really nice kit the sprue comes together really nicely I don't recall having any issues with it so um, yeah you'll be really really pleased with the sprues that you get and it all comes in one sprue as well so we're gonna have a look at the green so to base coat I'm using NATO green from Tamiya and then I'm adding a bit of that flat flesh. So if you watch my Anzac video, I did the same sort of thing. And then I add some acrylic thinners. Give it a good mix, like a madman. Stir it like crazy. This is a really good practice for people that are new to airbrushing. Use a palette, don't do it in your airbrush. I know people swear by it, but honestly, you're going to give yourself a whole world of trouble eventually because it's going to clog your, your airbrush. Then I use that suctiony thingy Mabobio and then I give it a spray paint with my airbrush. But to start off with, I use Tamiya Surface Primer Light Grey. Always the same primer. I use a rattle can just to save time. I hate any additional paint in my airbrush that doesn't need to be there just because I hate unblocking it and cleaning it every time um, because my process is rather long. <laughs> So you want to make sure that you have a camo scheme in mind. So this is the one I was going for and that you're putting an even covering of that green down. With that green down, we want to move to the brown. So for the brown, I'm using NATO brown. Now I found NATO brown just to be a touch too dark. So as I did previously, I had a little bit of flat flesh. With the same process of using acrylic thinners and stirring like a madman, I then started the airbrushing. So I go at about a 3 to 1 ratio, it's exactly the same with the green as well in terms of ratio, and I start to airbrush. You can see I'm taking my time here. This is a Harder and Steinbeck 2-in-1 Evo, and I've switched from my 0.20mm needle, which I used for the green, to my 0.15mm needle for the brown, and that's what I'm sort of going for here. The brown in that picture is uh, a little bit darker as well. Now we want to move on to the black. So the black, I'm just using NATO black straight out of the bottle. I'm not going to add any flat flesh to it. Obviously going to do my acrylic thinners. So when I'm using the 0.15, I always go at a 1 to 1 ratio of paint to thinners. The 0.15 needle is incredibly small. The nozzle is very, very tiny. So any little bit of paint build up is going to block that so you really want to get that uh, paint to thinner ratio correct when you're using this again I'm referring to this guide the colors again aren't exactly what I believe they should be in that picture that just popped up so yeah each to their own then mask the bottom bits of the I'm assuming these are like wheel guards because they were all black as shown in the picture and then we want to move on to the tracks and panel lines so my track recipe is always the same when I'm painting tracks I always start with black and you can see that I'm using a pretty 
small size brush here ordinarily i would use a much bigger brush but for the sake of this video i've already done the majority of the tracks i'll just leave a little bit just to show you what color i'm using but if you're a regular to the channel you're probably asleep at this point because my processes always remain very similar they don't really change too much and then as i said with all my processes being very similar i'm now giving it an enamel wash in black wash from mig ensure that you've given your model a gloss coat before you attempt to do this you do not want to do this without that because the cleanup process just won't happen okay and you could potentially damage the paintwork as well also it's a good practice just to add a little bit of odorless thinners to your paint mixture and then add the wash onto the model so you mix the two together that's just going to help the wash run a little bit more and then do a pin rush as shown here the cleanup stage is really really easy i'll nail it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes i then get a cotton bud and i slowly start working it this is a clean cotton bud there is no thinner on that bud i should say um, and i'm just cleaning away any of that excess wash now if you leave it a little bit longer that's fine just get a bit of that uh, enamel thinners and add it to your bud and clean it up now i want to give the vehicle a dry brush of stone gray the reason i'm going to do that is because i'm going to avoid using my oil washes or my oils uh, and anything like that i want to make this a really quick process something that anyone can really do really straightforward you can make it look super dirty and with streaks already so you can see that i'm brushing vertically down i'm not going across it i'm going straight down that is going to add little stone gray streaks and then i just slowly start dabbing it around it's going to start reducing the sharpness of the paint color as well now for painting lights and such, I use Luftwaffe Uniform Blue. So these had like sensors and obviously where the um, commander's hatches are some sort of window or windows. So you want to capture those. These little details really do help the figure pop. Especially this figure because it's lacking tools and everything else that I've become so accustomed to with World War II vehicles. Now I feel like I'm assuming they're indicators, please tell me if I'm wrong, but they on the pictures I've seen they're like an orangey red colour. So the outer one I'm painting in this orange red from Vallejo and then the same at the very front here as well. So you can see I've already painted the lights at the front and I'm just painting the indicator. And then what I'm assuming is the brake light, I'm painting that in flat red. If it's not an indicator it's going to be embarrassing. but. Uh, I hope it is. And then for those bits that I've just painted, I'm going to go over them with no oil. So this part might be a bit excessive, but I think it really works nicely. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but it, for the sake of an extra few minutes, it's probably just worth it. You can also use this no oil just to really tidy up uh, anything that you want to make a bit darker. So you can see I'm just adding some more of that wash to where these vents are just because the enamel wash wasn't as strong as I wanted it to be. And that's where the acrylic wash really comes in handy. But you don't want to be doing super fine washes with an acrylic wash because it's just harder to clean up. Then for the tracks and wheels, I'm using Umbar wash. This is going to really make them look dirty without having to use pigments and oils, etc. Now you're going to go through unbar wash relatively quickly if you do this if you're doing the same technique as, as what I'm doing here, um, but that's okay. I mean it's like four bucks a bottle, so just grab yourself quite a few. Um, the method really does work. Now for the lights, I'm going back over them with Luftwaffe Uniform Blue, and I'm painting the majority of it in Luftwaffe Uniform Blue. Then I'm painting 50% of it in Luftwaffe Uniform Blue with white at a 2 to 1 ratio. So now I'm slowly going to start to build up the really bright colour. So 50% of that area 
So probably like diagonally across from the top right to the bottom left. And then we now move it to a one to one ratio. So that blue is getting really light and I'm going at a 25%. So I'm just in the very corner. And then I go straight white and I add about 10% of white just to the very edge of one of the corners. And then for the light bulbs, I just add in two little dots or lines and then you should be sweet. And then we go back over the orange with orange red. And then back to flat red for the break. So it's just all going to make it pop a little bit more than what it ordinarily would have without that black wash on there. Now for antennas, I use a dustpan and brush, the brush from the dustpan and brush set, and I chop off the little bits of it and they make perfect antennas. They're really sturdy. They're not hard to cut to shape. They're very cheap. Obviously one brush will last you an eternity, so you only need to get it once. Once they're glued in, I use black gray from Vallejo. And I also painted a nice little French flag there as well because what an easy flag to paint. And it looks awesome. Then for the tracks to finish them off, I give them a dry brush of flat brown. And you can see that those tracks really come to life. They look dirty, they look like they've been in mud, they look a little bit rusty. Perfect, super easy to do. You don't have to waste any of it time on it and it's done you can add a tiny little bit of silver if you really wanted to but i really don't think you'll ever see silvery tracks unless the vehicle's been in the museum now we want to weather it and i told you already in this video that it's going to be easy and it really is i'm using to me weathering master set a and i'm using the different shades of like sand and flat earth i'm not doing the mud and i'm just gonna add in little bits here you can see that i'm not dragging it across i'm just dabbing it on little bits at a time. If you do that, you're going to stop it from looking like it's just been brushed on. You're just dabbing it on so it's just been worked up and then you just work it to as heavy as you want it to be. And you can tell already that the effect is just pretty awesome and it makes life so much easier so you don't have to worry about any of the oil washes etc. And then there we go. So it's done. It took absolutely no time at all honestly if excluding drying time i'm going to say it took probably about an hour and a half um, so you could paint five of these easy in a in a day session if you just sat down and said you know what, i'm going to paint five of these in a day session you will be laughing you could just get these done um, and the other vehicles are going to be very similar so really cool now I did say at the start of the video that there's also another giveaway. So there was a giveaway in the OzCam or Anzac video that I did. We've got another giveaway and that is two other sprues of the Leclerc. So if you want some French vehicles, comment below and make sure that you've subscribed and the winner will be announced in a week's time. Also a huge thank you to my Patreons. You will have a chance to win this as well as the Australian tanks so if you're not a patreon you do have time to sign up and as well as a become a youtube channel member they're all the same but other than that guys if you're new here i really would appreciate if you subscribed and liked the video um, and i really do appreciate you all taking the time to watch it thank you so much and i'll catch you at the next one